everybody and welcome back to my channel. I am Jen and this is Fundy Fridays and this is my little empire of makeup deconstruction and and humor. Remember that. Anyway, so this video that you're watching right now is a re-release of my, technically it was the like fourth Duggar video I made. Real OG Jennaites might remember that I put out Duggars 1, 2, and 3 uh, back in the 2019 probably and they were very short and very crappy and filmed right before I went to work. The one that we're gonna do today uh, was filmed a little bit later. This is what Marshall was chewing on. Okay. Anyway, the video in question that I'm going to be uh, uh, giving commentary on today is my is my uh, original Duggars video. The one that got 2 million views, by the way. It got blocked worldwide by Discovery Communications because there is a significant amount of footage from 19 Kids and Counting in it. So I understand why they blocked it, but I still wish they didn't. What are you doing? What did you knock over? What? What is it? Juno Birch? Yes, something, yes, something, yes, something, yes, something. When I filmed the original Duggar video, it had a very interesting ending because it was right around the time that the feds first started investigating Josh Duggar. And at the time, we didn't know why that was, and the Duggar family were saying that there wasn't an investigation. So that will be fun to see again. And this video, if you hadn't seen my Bates re release, it's going to be similar to that. I'm going to play the video and then I'm going to pop in to give you some commentary. Hope you have fun and I hope you learn something. And we'll talk about a full quiver. The Duggar clan features 19 children. All of their names start with the letter J. And while cameras have filled the family, filmed the family for the last 10 years, viewers have really had the chance to see what it's like to be a Duggar only recently. Do you guys miss my old intro? Uh, and it's sweet. I just used whatever title program was in DaVinci and um, the song is called Ben Sound Happy Rock, I think. And uh, I have heard it on like commercials and stuff. So I was like, oh my God, isn't that funny? Anyway, let's begin. Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. I am Jen and this is Fundy Fridays. On my channel, I usually talk about Christian fundamentalism while I do my makeup, but I decided not to do my makeup in this video because it is really hard. Oh my God, queen of not doing your makeup anymore on camera. <laughs> I also did want to point out that uh, this shirt is from Mod Cloth because people always ask and it's just like a tie top. It's not a dress or anything um, and it it doesn't fit me very well. So that's why I don't wear it very often. Yes, this episode was the beginning of the yellow eyeshadow meme and also I am in front of a green screen in my living room at this point. That's why there's like some green um, kind of feathering going on and I did my best to key things out. I did a pretty good job for not knowing how to edit videos um, and people were like, you shouldn't wear a green shirt in front of a green screen. Make your own video. People also asked what is in the background. It is the... I can't remember, but it is some sort of scenic, beautiful view in uh, Northwest Arkansas, which is where the Duggars are from. I am in the process of redoing a couple of my videos that I feel could use some better production quality. When I first started this channel, I had no idea that anyone would even watch it. And I was rushing to get videos out once a week. That's all she wrote. So I'm going to be combining all of my Duggar videos into one today. And we're gonna be covering some new stuff, some old stuff. The Duggars are a conservative American family and they adhere to the independent fundamentalist Baptist doctrine. They are widely known for their multiple shows on TLC that showcase their large family of 19 children. And now they can kind of be said to be ambassadors of the faith due to their notoriety. Several male members of the Duggar clan have dipped their toes into the water of politics and law enforcement. They maintain a reputation as a wholesome family with quirky views, but I'm going to attempt to demonstrate the insidious behavior and beliefs that lurk inside their prayer closet. Start with the patriarch, Jim Bob Duggar. He was born July 18th, 1965, and he was born to conservative Christian parents, notably his mother, Mary, who was known as Grandma Duggar. She said, sadly passed away last year and her funeral was broadcast on TLC. Jim Bob's sister is Diana and she had a daughter named Amy. Amy is not a fundamentalist, but actually an aspiring reality TV star. You're still trying to figure out how you failed me. You're not to choke me. What kind of father does that? Didn't listen. I had to get your attention. You got a lot to learn, I mean, Daddy. I'm in your mind. 
<laughs> the amount of times a day that I say, you got a lot to learn, Daddy, is just too many to list. But let's just say this scene was very influential in my life. I'm in your heart. I've got total control. I have I see something real the here. whole time. I've not been smiling at all. What do you want from me? This is what I want. I want you to look into my eyes. It wasn't your fault. <sighs> She now runs an online boutique and does mommy blogging. There are lots of rumors and speculation about the relationship between Amy and her cousins, you know, saying that maybe there's conflict there, but I've found most of it to be unfounded. We literally do not know what goes on behind the scenes in this family. We can't possibly know what their family dynamic is. What we do know is that Amy has spoken out against Bill Gothard and she is generally more progressive than her famous family. And I'm not a fan of Amy. I think that she perpetuates a lot of misogyny and um, other problematic values and I don't like how uh, chummy she is with some unethical uh, internet journalists and I just think she's kind of annoying. And, but yeah, I, I don't know how she is with the rest of the family. I'm sure there is lots of drama behind the scenes in Duggar World, of course, but we're just never going to see it. She was born September 13th, 1966. And let me just get this out of the way. Michelle's hair, it's so big because it's full of secrets. She comes from a more secular home and she even has a sister who is a lesbian, though, uh... She doesn't associate with her. Michelle was a cheerleader who used to mow her lawn in a bikini, which I only tell you because she is determined to share that story with everyone. And she tells you the story because she wants you to know that it was sinful to wear a bikini and cause her neighbors to stumble in their marriage. Sounds fake, but okay. Michelle has also suffered from an eating disorder, but has since overcome it through the power of Jesus. I ended up starting a bad habit of making myself get sick after I would eat especially if I had more food than I felt like I should eat. And, um, and it was destructive for my health, my life. I'm proud of Michelle for taking care of herself and getting healthy. And I don't want to imply that if you seek religion or you become Christian as a part of your healing process, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, I just wanted to comment on Michelle because her and a lot of people like her, um, take that however you want to. They like to imply that once you become a Christian that all of your problems will magically go away and that is definitely not the case especially if you are joining a religion when you are in a highly vulnerable state like she was um, that might cloud your judgment for a little bit and then once you come down from the high of joining the religion you still have your problems to deal with so I just wanted to point that out. Legend goes that Jim Bob was smitten by Michelle while she was working at a yogurt shop. They dated and then Michelle converted to his religion and they married in 1984. When they first got married, Michelle actually worked outside the home and the couple watched TV and used birth control. Despite being on the pill, Michelle still had her first child, Josh, in 1988. This was tragically followed by a miscarriage shortly after. Michelle insists that being on the pill is what caused her miscarriage. For the record, that's not how the birth control pill works at all. The birth control simply stops you from ovulating. It doesn't kill your unborn baby. Although a precursor search on YouTube would not tell you that. And another thing, um, you had a lot of people, uh, mostly fundies, jump down my throat about that one because they're like, it actually does cause abortion. You don't know what you're talking about. And I will say that uh, the only thing I was wrong about is that some hormonal birth control specifically stops you from ovulating. There's a, about a million different types of birth control, some hormonal, some not, and they do different things, but they keep you from getting pregnant. There is no such thing as a birth control pill that will make you have an abortion. They have abortion pills. That, that's just what you would take. I don't care if some fundy is going to try to catch me on some semantic bullshit and be like, well, I use this and then th I don't know. It, it doesn't matter. It's really irresponsible and it's fear mongering and it's propaganda to tell uh, people that the birth control caused miscarriage. Back on the pill and I ended up getting pregnant while on the pill and we ended up losing that baby and then realizing that with our own lack of knowledge just uh allowing one of our own babies to be destroyed that was that was painful after she went off the pill michelle started having babies about every 18 months in spite of both the many health concerns the duggars don't watch tv or dance we try not to shake body parts around to draw attention to our bodies we don't want to stir up 
desires, different things that um, cannot be righteously fulfilled, that cannot be, um, I don't know. <laughs> they dress modestly, including the men who have been known to run a marathon in jeans. Out of this sea of runners, you could pick out our boys pretty quick because our boys were the ones in pants and everybody else had shorts on. Somebody bitched at me in the comments saying that I called that a marathon when it was really a 5K or whatever. And I just want to say, bitch, does it look like I've ever run a fucking marathon or a 5K? Yeah, we kind of stood out a little bit. Can you imagine the chafing? With all that friction, you could start a fire. Generally, the whole family acts disrespectful when it comes to new cultures, making faces and acting disgusted when they eat local cuisine. And here's an example, Jim Bob trying to argue with a Scottish atheist. Now, what, what's your faith background? My faith background, um, my faith background, uh, I don't really kind of believe in God much. If we just, if we were a little closer to the sun, we'd burn up. If we we're a little farther away, we'd, we'd freeze to death. It's incredible. And so yeah. God, he loves you, and, and but he, he wants you to be, like you know, you. He just, <laughs> we, just <laughs> have to, we just have to <laughs> repent from our sin, turn to him, give him the control of our life. And so we're going to meet you. We got to run. All I'm going to say about the Scottish guy is that he is iconic. And everybody that watched that video was like, fuck yeah, we love the Scottish guy. Uh, so. The Duggars are, or at least used to be, associated with IBLP and Vision Forum. If you would like to know more about these organizations, go ahead and check out these videos. I cover the topic way more in depth. But in a nutshell, they are Christian homeschooling organizations, and both groups have leaders who have been caught up in sexual abuse scandals. The actual curriculum that the Duggars follow is from IBLP. It's called ATI, Advanced Training Institute, and it's pretty suspect. They used a set of texts known as wisdom booklets, which are pamphlets that try to combine reading, writing, and math with out-of-context Bible verses. These booklets also teach things like how to dress modestly and how to style your hair. There's even a booklet about what to do if you get sexually assaulted by a family member. Wisdom booklets are supposed to be taught to all family members regardless of age or comprehension level, which is great because even the little ones are exposed to a large vocabulary. Let's spell it together. Ready? D E S T I T E I did also want to mention that um, pretty much all of the wisdom booklets that um, IBLP made have been photocopied and put online for free to read. So if you want to read those, you totally can. I love the internet. The Duggars also recommend Blanket Training and the book To Train Up a Child. This controversial book teaches parents how to break your child's will through various abusive methods. I won't go into much detail about this book because I am going to make a separate video about it, but it is notable that in the 2006 police report that was filed because of Josh's indiscretions, mentions that the children are disciplined with a rod. There's also a video circulating that shows what people are speculating is Michelle yelling at her child and then acting nice to the camera. What's going on? Say hi to our Instagram followers. Howdy. Howdy. Hey, mama. This is our Instagram followers. We're just sent, making a video and saying hey. Hello. Hello. <laughs> and for the record, I don't <clears throat> think anything like abusive was happening in that clip. I think Michelle was giving one of her kids a talking to. Um, do I think she yells at them off camera? Hell yeah. Um, do I think that they're all getting their asses beat? Allegedly. Um, but that clip didn't really show anything, but it is one of the last pieces of footage where Derek is allowed on the property. So I think for that reason, that video is very interesting. The Duggars are infamous for their strict courtships. Praying and uh, talking for a little while and I was just wondering if you wanted to make it official and if you wanted to officially court me. This is one of my favorite jokes of all time because if you get the joke then you're out of as a pervert um, and if you don't then oh, god I wish I was you. As a family they don't believe in physical contact including kissing or front hugging until marriage. Although it must be said that these practices do follow appropriate social distancing guidelines. Did you say at some point that you had practiced with your hand? So I was thinking you know what I wonder what it feels like so I practiced on my hand. I think 
practicing on my hand was just to see what it felt like. There's also been talk of a 400 question survey that potential suitors must fill out prior to the start of a relationship. That's not I'm, so, I'm sorry, wait a second. Jim Bob made you guys fill out questionnaires that he is were- not kidding, yes. Yes, yes they did. Yeah. I got sent a 50 page questionnaire. I sent it back at 105 pages. The Duggars are very involved in their children's sex lives and they always make sure that their education is accurate and well informed. Before the wedding night, definition of normal sexual <laughs> intercourse. Yes. <laughs> and so if I give this to you, you'll know everything we know. I think I kind of understand how it works. Yeah. I think I learned that. It's kind of like, like Legos. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Ed Wheat book that they're talking about is also available for free online as a pdf i've looked through it um it's okay it like acknowledges um anatomy in a way that usually isn't by fundies if you know what i mean it's not exactly like a sex positive you know romp also just anything that has to do with josh and his sexuality i'm like right to jail i can't do this from 1999 to 2002 jim bob served in the arkansas house of representatives according to justfacts.votesmart.org jim bob duggar supports the death penalty lax gun laws privatized health care abortion to be illegal in all forms and thinks that welfare funding should be redirected to faith-based and community-based private organizations but stepping out of the hollowed halls of arkansas congress hasn't stopped the duggars from being politically active i am so sad because their shirts said that they survived roe versus wade R.I.P. R.I.P. our rights. In 2012, the whole Ding Dang family came out to support Rick Santorum. The Santorums are raising seven precious children. Senator Rick Santorum will fight for small businesses and bring American jobs back home. Rick believes in strong national defense. He's a defender of traditional marriage, protecting the core of our families. He believes in securing our borders. Mr. Santorum has an A-plus rating from the NRA, and he will defend our gun rights. Okay, I apologize for leaving the Santorum joke up on the screen for way too long. It is kind of gross, but uh, I thought it was funny. In 2014, Michelle Duggar recorded a robocall that was encouraging citizens to vote for a bill that would actively discriminate against trans people. Michelle Duggar, I'm calling to inform you of some shocking news that will affect the safety of Northwest Arkansas women and children. The Fayetteville City Council is voting on an ordinance this Tuesday night that would allow men, yes, I said men, to use women's and girls' restrooms, locker rooms, showers, sleeping areas, and other areas that are designated for females. And in 2016, their best pal, Mike Huckabee, came to their defense as well. When the Duggars came out and their son had molested their child, you more or less said that you felt sorry for their parents. Ma'am, let me tell you something. You have no idea what you're talking about. You don't know that family, and I do. You don't know what those parents did and how they worked to try to take care of their entire family. Right. I'm going to mark her down as undecided. <laughs> no, I'm very decided. Good. I stand up for the rights of the uh, children in this I world. Stay. Jim Bob's gaggle of obedient and identically dressed children attracted media attention, and TLC decided to make a TV special about the freak show. The first of these specials was aired in 2004, and it does not age well. In this special, 14 Kids Pull Out Game Week, you can see creepy voiced and prairie dressed Michelle, along with the introduction of the infamous buddy system. The system really means that mom cannot be everywhere at all times, and so my older children help to take care of the younger children. Every Duggar has at least one buddy. If you're too old to need help from a buddy, that means you're ready to take on a younger buddy. A big buddy helps you get dressed, brush your teeth, comb your hair, get your breakfast, do your schoolwork, learn to play violin and piano, and so. They're there to pick you up when you fall and keep track of you when you're out and about. No one is exempt from the buddy brigade. Jim Bob's buddy is Michelle, and Michelle reserves the privilege of being each of the children's first buddy. When the baby is born, it's my buddy until it's weaned. And then from there, it goes to the other buddy, whoever's turn it is to get a buddy. One of my main takeaways about that is, first of all, she calls the baby it, which goes against their pro-life agenda. And it's just very depersonalizing. It's just like, oh, I'm going to have a child every 18 months and it's going to go down this line of 
you know, the chain of command of who's going to raise it, not me. This is an inevitable process. Like, they have a system. They have a buddy system. Because they knew they were going to have tens of children. Stop it. Get some help. And then from there, it goes to the other buddy, whoever's turn it is to get a buddy. Now, according to Duggar Internet Lore, there was a clip where Michelle said something along the lines of, my daughters know when I'm pregnant before I do because they watch the calendar like a hawk. Now, I couldn't find that clip anywhere. And I even bought the two episodes of 17 Kids and Counting where this supposedly happened. I vaguely remember it happening, but honestly, it could be a Mandela effect. Um, this is the closest clip I could find that matches that description. But first you wanted to tell the kids something. We're expecting number 18. Wow. <laughs> oh my God. They didn't know my girls watched the calendar <laughs> like a hawk, but we just found out Monday night. Wow. We were so, you know, I invite whoever, if you guys find the clip that I'm talking about, that other people are talking about, amazing, tag me in it, but I, it just does not, I just don't remember it that way. And it's been bothering me for like five, six years because people argue about it. They swear up and down that it happened this certain way, but you know, our fucking memories are faulty, man. <sighs> Maybe I'm too passionate about this. In 2008, network executives must have figured out that it was just cheaper to leave the camera crew there instead of coming back every year between specials. So they launched 17 Kids and Counting. On the original show, the producers actually seemed to be poking fun at the family and lead them into unusual situations for comedy. Inside, people are the same. No matter the color of the skin, how they dress, or really, people are people. Oh, people are people, huh? What about uh, if their sexual or gender orientation does not uh, match your worldview? You still think they're people? You still think they're people? Hmm, those are funny looking glassware, isn't it? Has Jim Bob ever used drugs? No. Jim Bob has never used drugs. There's been a few times I've been sick. I've taken some Tylenol or aspirin. <laughs> no, I've never... Uh... I've never had, never taken marijuana. I'm pretty sure Jim Bob gets his weed from Ben. With the help of TLC and church friends, the Duggars built their Jolly Green Fortress in 2006. It has a playroom, commercial kitchen, recording studio, and um, prayer closet. First off, we have our prayer closet over here. We designed this oh. so that this would be the space when somebody needed a quiet place mm -hmm. to spend time alone with the Lord, mm -hmm. that would be the doors open, you know, it's available. If it's closed, there's someone there. Mm -hmm. And it's not to be used for anything but mm -hmm. spending time alone with the Lord. It's mm -hmm. not for schoolwork or anything like that. And so it's been a uh, real special time. We've had different times where there'd be more than, you know, one in there mm -hmm. praying together. Mm -hmm. And Dad and I with one of the children or whatever. Yeah. So it's a good thing to have that place where, you know, you can just have quietness. That you need it. And how often do you utilize well, the prayer closet? Well, quite a bit, but I think, and so does everyone else. Yeah. So there's, the door's usually closed yes. because we need a quiet place. Mm -hmm. Apparently, prayer closets are a pretty big deal in the funny community. Uh, Lydia Plath uh, really enjoyed her prayer closet in season three. Um, and apparently it's from War Room which is another Christian movie that I haven't seen yet. I'm dying to, though, because it's it's very popular. I mean, I don't think there's anything wrong with the idea of a prayer closet. I just think that it's kind of humorous because, oh, you want to talk to God? Why don't you go sit in your little closet? <laughs> you know? Little other information has actually come out about this raid, and anything else you might see is just baseless speculation. Facts are important. Even Ha! Stupid bitch. Me. I'm calling myself a stupid bitch. Thanks for joining us for KNWA News at 6. Yesterday, KNWA reported that HSI was present at the Duggar House in Tawnytown in connection to a federal investigation. Today, HSI spokesperson Brian Cox amended his statement, saying instead that the agency was in Springdale investigating a business associated with Josh Duggar. Cox says agents were present at wholesale motor cars in Springdale. According to the Washington County Collector's Office, this location has Josh Duggar listed as the contact for the business, but he's not listed as the property owner. Cox says no charges have been filed and he cannot disclose the nature of the investigation. The Duggar family released a statement to KNWA saying in part, quote, As to any investigation being conducted, to our knowledge, no member of our family is a target of any investigation of any kind by any local, state, or federal agency. We appreciate the outpouring of love and support received from our friends and fans. Jim Bob and Michelle continue to pop up on the current Counting On show and are active on social media, even though the consensus is that nobody wants to hear from them anymore. Okay, I already gave you the warning. This is the infamous mini golf humping scene. Um, 
And I think people have since pulled the actual full clip of this and put it online. I grabbed it from like The Soup or Best Week Ever, if you remember those shows. And it was basically like a gif on a loop. But there are better versions of this clip if you have to see it. And also, used a copyright song, so you know exactly what the fuck that means. Chill and I love to kiss. If you're horny, let's do it. Ride it, my pony. My saddle's waiting. Come on and jump on it. Oh, Josh Duggar. What can I say that hasn't been said to death already? He was once the golden child of the family, earning the nickname the Little Governor when he would tag along with Jim Bob at the Capitol. Allegedly, Josh was set to court Arkansas State Rep Jim Holt's daughter, but blew it when he was caught watching internet porn. This was what was known as the sin in the camp that caused Holt to lose his re-election campaign. Was I don't know if that was true. I don't know if um, Josh looking at porn on the government computers is what... Um, sit in the camp was referring to. Can't really trust me on that one, but uh, look it up. It's fucked up. <laughs> it was also around this time that he started molesting his sisters on an unknown babysitter. Okay, if I could redo the whole thing, I definitely would not have chosen that picture and I would not have used the M word and I would have just alluded to things. I wouldn't have gone into detail. And my style has changed since I did this video and um, yeah. Sorry, Duggar sisters, I didn't mean to throw you under the bus like that. Uh, and I, I definitely would not do it that way again, so, sorry. After these incidents, Jim, Bob, and Michelle attempted to sweep everything under the rug and punish Josh by sending him to help a church elder build a house and letting a cop give him a stern talking to. And in an incident that I'm sure is completely unrelated, this particular cop later got busted for child porn. Oops, sorry, yeah, I, I don't like that word either. It's C-S-A-M or C-S-A-I, it's not what I just said, so. Bad Jen. The incident, Jim Bob had considered sending Josh to a legit rehab called Piney Ridge, but Jim Holt told him that the places like that will just teach him how to sin better. You know, just in case you were feeling bad about Jim Holt losing his re-election campaign. In 2006, the Duggars were all set to make an appearance on Oprah's show, but an anonymous email was sent to her production team stating that the Duggars had a nasty secret. Oprah's team forwarded the email to the police, and at that point, the Duggar parents finally decided to do something about Josh, though rest assured that their attempt at at corrective action was decidedly half-assed. All of the family members were interviewed by the police and the information is available online if you really want to read it, but I'll warn you that it is pretty disturbing. After all this, the Duggars decided to return to doing fuck all and the whole situation just became a dirty small town secret. But TLC went ahead and gave them a show because they can't turn down a train wreck. And since I have no shame, I'm going to reuse the opening to my original Josh video. This is an alternate reality where he finally faced justice for what he did and I like watching it because it it feels better than what really happened. Okay, so this next clip is really fucking funny. Bear with me here. I went down a hole to catch a predator rabbit hole just to find the clips for this next joke. And the only thing that I would change is like better editing. Like I know about keyframes now. So like I could, yeah, whatever. While it's not funny to joke about crimes against children, it is funny to joke about Josh Duggar getting arrested. Wait, is that fucked up too? Sound off in the comments. Predator, the chat room, and decided to hit on a decoy, an adult posing as a 15-year-old. Positions have you tried? You like doggy? The decoy says, I never did doggy before. Now, the man with the bag of tricks right. is walking in our house. Did you try some of my sweet tea? And he's still willing to risk being exposed on national television. I know you're 12, but girls these days are way ahead. See, it's kind of funny, the sweet tea bit. I thought it was funny. Our chaperone. So we chose Jane and John David. We thought, why not have a double date? Arkansas. We are from Arkansas. No. <laughs> Josh continued to play the role of favorite child and arrogant douchebag on TV. He married the first girl who would have him and they popped out a few kids. Now I can't play uh, lengthy clips of uh, this episode anymore. RIP. If you have a way to watch the Josh Duggar wedding episode of 19 Kids and Counting, absolutely go fucking watch it. It is chef's kiss. It is bon appetit. Uh, top level cringe. It is just horrific. The way God ordained it all, she, or Josh becomes the authority at the wedding. You know, he becomes her authority, not me. And that's the way God designed the transfer of authority 
and it's a good design. Just how weird they are about sex on 19 Kids and Counting. Um, for example, the next clip I'm about to show you is Amy talking about Josh's first times and them asking Jessa and Jana about it. He's got a lot of firsts today. He's got the first kiss, the first first everything. So, um, but where's the wooden knot? <laughs> Her, he's going to have love marks yeah. all over him. But he won't mind. <laughs> God, I wish I was dead. <laughs> And then when you thought it couldn't get any worse than that, here is Josh licking his lips at Amy describing how to kiss somebody. Are you nervous about the kiss? Mm, not really. I'm looking forward to it, though. Looking forward to it? It's your first kiss. So, like, um, I need to give you some pointers as oh, far yeah? as what to do. Yeah? Yeah. Since I've kissed a couple of boys in my lifetime. You have more I than one. Imagine that, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so you don't bite her lips. Mm. Don't and don't don't like head butter, you know, like go and like, like, like dive in. Yeah, because she's probably gonna go this way and you go the other way. Their wedding was televised by TLC and Josh, who would later cheat on Anna, sang her the loyalty song. When you have hard times and all others are gone, I will be there when the troubles have come. Through sunshine or rain, when no help can be found. Things may seem hopeless, but just look around. Ooh. Check out this totally not creepy photo shoot of Josh and Anna and Jim, Bob, and Michelle and their twin pregnancies. In 2013, Josh and his wife, Anna, moved to the D.C. area and he became the executive director of FRC Action, a lobbying pack that is sponsored by the Family Research Council. The Family Research Council is an American fundamentalist Protestant activist group. The FRC originally started off as a division of the infamous Focus on the Family before breaking off in 1993. FRC's mission is to advance faith, family, and freedom in a public policy and the culture from a Christian worldview. FRC promotes what it considers to be family values, advocating and lobbying for policies in the government. They oppose access to pornography, embryonic stem cell research, abortion, and divorce. The FRC has been declared a hate group by the Southern Poverty Law Center. Well, really, I think quite clearly what we've seen, uh, whether it's Hobby Lobby or now Priest for Life, this administration is set on trampling and running roughshod on those who hold deeply held religious beliefs. And what they're saying is, if you hold the belief that life begins at conception, as many of us do, that you cannot exercise your right as an employer, as a organization, to say, no, I will not pay for the death of unborn children. The birth control pill does cause abortions. I mean, one part of it, or two parts of it, are there to prevent a abortion, uh, prevent pregnancy, but the third part of it actually causes abortions. And when did you first learn about that? Well, you know, I've done a, a limited amount. I've done some research on on the abortion, you know, on the abortion causing drugs. Oh yeah, I've, I've done some some research on the on the abortion. Fuck out of here, Josh. I think people are are shocked to understand. What is it, you know, what this really is about? And I think when you look at taking of innocent, unborn human life, it takes on so many forms nowadays. The most pervasive of which is, is the things that people know about. When I was looking for clips of Josh actually working for the FRC, I found this interview where in a few sentences, he both condemns Islam, but then turns around and demands religious freedom. People want to extract, they want to talk about foreign policy, and we talk about what's going on right now with ISIL, and what happened this very day with the beheading in Oklahoma. It was, it was spurred on by someone who was taking their religion, their belief in radical Islam, and going out and taking this out into its fullest extent. And I'll tell you, this is what we're seeing in, in tons of these situations around the world right now. And this president and our, this administration right now has refused to step up and to really deal with this. He has explicitly taken the, the stance that Islam is a religion of peace and all this kind of stuff. When we rightfully know that people are definitely pushed to go to their limits when they're willing to follow this ideology. And it's, it's fault. I'm not saying that every person that, uh, you know, that it is Islamic that would believe this way. But I do say that what we're seeing is there's a propensity towards people who are going to radicalize and go out that way when they hold to these kind of beliefs. And so what we're talking about here is the importance of making these things known, the importance of standing up for what you believe, 
having the discussion. You know, the thing is, I have a lot of friends that don't agree with me. Okay, they they may call themselves liberals. They may not. They're probably not in church on Sunday morning like most of us Americans. Are. Josh, we know exactly what you were doing on Sunday morning, so I really don't want to hear it. Are but we can have a discussion. But what we've seen in recent times, and just like my friends the Benhams who are going to be sharing later tonight, there what we're seeing is an agenda to silence people of faith. Shit hit the fan in 2015 when In Touch magazine invoked the Freedom of Information Act and acquired the police reports from 2006 and published them in their magazine. As a result of this scandal, 19 Kids and Counting was canceled and Josh lost his job. Josh released his statement in response. 12 years ago, as a teenager, I acted inexcusably, for which I am extremely sorry and I deeply regret. I hurt others, including my family and close friends. Jim, Bob, Michelle, Jessa, and Jill all attempted to do damage control by sitting down for an interview with Megan Kelly. It is notable that Josh Josh did not participate in these interviews. It's suspect that this is due to Josh being a sad little baby boy needs everyone else to pick up his messes for him. The interviews were super awkward because the Duggars kept making the situation worse by saying unnecessary and weird things. He said he was just curious about girls and he had gone in and just basically touched them over their clothes while they were asleep and they didn't even know he had done it. He was saying, how could you unfairly in their view compare transgendered people to child molesters suggest they are child molesters knowing what you know about josh i think that protecting young girls and not allowing young men and men in general to go into a girl's locker room is just common sense but this this is different because you injected child molestation into it i think you actually said pedophile in that and actually a pedophile is a an adult that preys on children Joshua was actually 14 and just turned 15 when he did what he did. And I think the legal definition is 16 and up for being an adult preying on a child. So he, so he was a child preying on a child. He was very sly, like the girls didn't catch on, you know? Mm -hmm. It was like, okay, if he catches a girl sleeping, you know, like a quick feel or whatever. Once that controversy died down, Josh wasted little time in creating another one. His credit card and email address were linked to an account on Ashley Madison. For the unaware, Ashley Madison is a website for people seeking extramarital affairs. Josh not only registered an account, but paid for the guaranteed affair package. What that means exactly, I'm not sure. But what I do know is, allegedly, all of the female profiles on Ashley Madison are either run by bots, escorts, or escort bots. What you want with that information? Furthermore, an OkCupid okay account was also found to be linked with Josh's email. On OkCupid, okay there are questions you can fill out to determine your compatibility, and apparently Josh loves sex every day. After this scandal happened, Josh came out with another statement in which he said, I have been the biggest hypocrite ever. While exposing faith and family values, I have secretly over the last several years been viewing pornography on the internet and this became a secret addiction and I became unfaithful to my wife. I am so ashamed of the double life that I've been living and am grieved for the hurt, pain, and disgrace my sin has caused my wife and family, and most of all, Jesus, and all those who profess faith in him. I brought hurt and reproach to my family, close friends, and the fans of our show with my actions that happened when I was 14 to 15 years old, and now I have rebroken their trust. The last few years, while publicly stating that I was fighting against immorality in our country while hiding my own personal failings, as I am learning the hard way, we have the freedom to choose our actions, but we do not get to choose our consequences. I deeply regret all the hurt I have caused so many by being such a bad example. I humbly ask for your forgiveness. Please pray for my precious wife, Anna, and our family during this time. Since Josh seems to have an oil and water relationship with consequences for his actions, he was sent to Reformers Unanimous rather than any substantive corrective action. RU has been nicknamed Prehab and can be thought of like a giant timeout corner when Christians can go to think about what they've done. So after all these debacles, TLC decided to commit necromancy and resurrect the corpse of 19 kids and counting, this time under the name of Jill and Jessa Counting On. In this first episode, you can see, once again, all of the other family members speaking for Josh. It is such a betrayal for a spouse to, to go through, um, what we're walking through. You know, who do you trust? Um, can you look out and, you know, see all these people and are they, you know, who they appear to be? It was just really hard to see that he had been making bad choices again. Because whatever I am, that's what they want to be. I know that's what it was for me and Josh. I always wanted to be like him. But one of the toughest things I ever had to tell my, my older brother was, I, 
I don't want to be like you anymore. And once again, things calmed down and Josh got fast to work at fucking everything up again. This time, adult star Danica Dillon filed a lawsuit against him for assault to the point of causing her physical and emotional injuries during an alleged affair. This suit was voluntarily dismissed in 2016, but for what it's worth, I believe you, Danica. He was very rough with me. In all honesty, though it was consensual, it more or less felt like I was being raped. He was tossing me around like a rag doll, forcing me to go into positions. Danica says she had no idea who the 19 kids and counting star was at the time, and says she ran into Josh a month later at another club where she was a featured dancer. He walked up to me and he goes, I am so sorry for the things that I did to you. I've been a fan of your movies. I've watched your scenes that this is what you were into. I'm sorry if I ever mistreated you. And I believed him. The 28 year old says they had sex again that night. He actually was a completely different person the second time. I mean, he was a little rough. What advice do you have for Josh Duggar? That he remains in treatment and seeks counseling and stops preying on women. In a less exciting scandal, Josh has also gotten in trouble for not having a proper permit to run his business. Josh and Anna seem to be living on or near the main property. Jana! Jana is a stay-at-home daughter in every sense of the word. Many people have speculated why she's still at home, whether it be to watch after her younger siblings or maybe a lack of interest in men. I feel compelled to say that I think it's rude how people are constantly badgering her to do things like get married and have children in a way, and I think we should leave her alone. We all know what happens when you're forced to marry the first guy that will take you. Uh, was attraction towards each other there from the beginning of the relationship. Oh, was it? You know me, if there's one thing I'm gonna do, it's fucking dunk on Bethany from Girl Defined. Oh, was it? Jana is very handy and talented in all realms of domesticity, such as carpentry, gardening, and child rearing. I think she's cool. Well, except for the time that she poorly photoshopped a girl's shorts into a skirt, but John David. John David is Jana's twin, and if I had to describe him, I'd say he's quiet and snarky. He is a pilot, and that's it. Seriously, that pretty much described his entire identity. He's also a part-time constable, which is an elected peacekeeping official. Some get paid, some don't. Some have training, some don't. In John David's case, he pulls people over for speeding. This motherfucker, Jay. No, no, man, I can't fuck with it right now. Oh, man, I've been dealing with you for three motherfucking months. You ain't hit the pipe in front of me yet. So what you saying, man? I thank you, 5-0. 5-0. Man, I ain't no motherfucking cop. Well, hit this motherfucker then. In 2018, he married Abby, an educated fundy. You look me in the face and tell me that wasn't one of the funniest fucking clips I've ever put together. Okay? And that was with my limited editing skills and my love for Snoop Dogg. In 2018, he married Abby, an educated fundy who wears pants. Sit on her, I guess. They have one daughter. John David is also involved with Medic Corps, along with several other of his family members and some Bates children. Medic Corps stands for Medical Evacuation Disaster Intervention Corps. For more info on that particular tale of Duggar stupidity, watch my Bates video. Jill Dillard. All right, we're gonna get spicy again. The inner workings of Jill Dillard's mind are an enigma. She is the first daughter to get married and she did so to a freewheeling missionary named Dave Grohl. Chet Derek Dillard. She was the first confirmed daughter to wear pants and has a facial piercing and apparently she has been receiving actual legitimate counseling as of late. More importantly, she is sending her kids to public school. She is notable for her role as a midwife to her sister along with a handful of other women. The issue with that is that the woman that she studied under got her license revoked for causing a birth injury. Her husband is seen as sort of an anti-hero in the fundy snark world. On one hand, he's a leech and he's the only Duggar in law that we know to ruffle Jim Bob's feathers and speak out against him. For a while, Jill and Derek lived in an unspecified area of Central America as missionaries. This would appear to be a fool's errand considering that over 69% of the Latin American population is Catholic and another 19% are Protestant. They also faced backlash after they basically ripped people off while raising money for their various trips back and forth to the States. Turns out they weren't actually sponsored by the Southern Baptist Convention and they are not licensed missionaries 
missionaries either. By far their favorite thing to do on mission trips is play white savior. It's risky here. Just we stand out as Americans. So yeah, it's definitely we're higher risk. You have to talk about things that probably a lot of couples wouldn't talk about. If we were back in the States, we wouldn't have to be talking about. Now if you die, like, what am I supposed to do from there? Jill has had two high-risk labors and people are always speculating on the status of her womb, which I find inappropriate. The only reason I bring this up is to remind you that Jill is very much sexually active and she made a blog post talking about all the ways she gets her husband in the mood, such as having sex three to four times a week LOL, putting on fragrant lotion before bed, kissing for at least six seconds, wearing sexy lingerie. And how can we forget Derek's companion blog, Hot Love, where he mentions getting to go to guys' nights at Chuck E. Cheese. Derek is currently in law school and Jill sells pyramid scheme products and makes vlogs. The internet loves to talk shit on Jill for her perceived flaws and her personality when they aren't making fun of what she wears, which is ridiculous. The only crime Jill is guilty of is being awkward. Where are we at? We are at a mosque. Thank you. I'm glad to see you here. I'm so glad. Yes. I have to show it to Jessa too. And if being awkward is a crime, lock me the fuck up. I guess she did instruct people on how to make a death trap out of a stroller. Okay, before <clears throat> before you watch this clip, I will say I re recant my statement. I don't think that she made a death trap. I don't think she's putting a baby in a carry case. I don't think she's putting a baby in a carrier and then putting it in a stroller and moving it around. At least I hope she's not. Um, so I will give her that the benefit of that doubt. Eggs. Oops. Okay. Eggs. So first you take your car seat. You put the handlebar all the way back, like extra far back. Then, let's see, let's see here. then you just slide it over the handlebars. Make sure it doesn't get hooked on the fabric right there. And then you just center it up and let it rest right there on the stroller. And voila. Then <clears throat> you can travel tight. So this is super nice whenever you're in a hurry, you don't have a lot of space and you can't fit. And there's this really eating his egg. And you can't fit the big bulky stroller in your car. But what do you expect from someone who was raised in a family that uses wisdom booklets and sister moms to raise their children? And while I'm on the topic of the Dillards, Eric Dillard is a transphobic asshole. He antagonized and misgendered Jazz Jennings, a minor at the time, on purpose. He has said on more than one occasion that he thinks that SRS is abusive. Eric was right in saying that TLC and Discovery Networks don't care about people that star on their network, they just want money. After all, they are a media company and they know their niche in the market, but they've also exploited Jill and her sisters after their childhood trauma. They've given platforms to abusive parents and child rapists. If Derek really wanted to hammer the point home that TLC is evil, I have no problem with that. But he didn't have to drag Jazz and the entire LGBTQ community down with her. He did it specifically because he is a bigot and it is important to remember that one bold act of defiance should not mislead you into thinking that Derek is a decent person. And if you're gonna agree with him in the comment section, then you're gonna be called out for it and you're gonna be blocked. I will not tolerate any transphobia, homophobia, sexism, racism, or anything like that on my channel. This is a safe space and I will not put up with any hate speech that would make myself or my followers uncomfortable. You can kick rocks. Cause that's the bottom line. All I will say about this is that um, I did get some flack for it. I had an actual famous turf in my comment section that was um, causing all kinds of problems. Had to go block that bitch. Um, the other thing is uh, I see a lot of people try to make like heroes out of Jill and Derek um, because they've left the Duggar family and you know they said that they would respect somebody's pronouns while they had them over for dinner, which, okay, the bar must be in hell. They're not allies. I don't think they ever will be. Um, they have a lot of learning to do and, you know, people aren't good or bad, except for Josh Duggar. He is all bad. Um, but just, they have a lot of learning to do. Don't get your hopes up about these two. Um, I'm glad that they uh, stand up to, to Jim Bob. I'm glad that Jill wears pants and takes her kids to school. In regards to 
how TLC treated Jazz, which is what Derek was attempting to talk about, I don't know. I really don't. I only watched one season of the show. I don't know what they did to her. That's not what Derek was talking about. Derek was just being a bigot. And I will also say that the comment sections on Duggar videos get... Re- like they escalate very fast and there's a lot of them and I can't moderate them anymore. I don't argue with people in the comments. I might leave like a bitchy message back to them if they mouth off, but I don't take the time to argue with people. So if if you see it, you know, argue with them back, but I'm not, I'm not fucking jumping in there. I recorded this little bit like five times just because I worry about being misinterpreted. I worry about not saying the exact perfect, most all encompassing statement And I guess that's kind of impossible. So I hope I don't offend anybody. I really don't want to. I want this to be a safe space. Um, And I love all of you. Um, And uh, Jessa Seawald. Once again, I'm going to reuse a joke here. Jessa Seawald is the Regina George of fundies. Saw Jessa Duggar wearing maxi skirts and flip flops. So I bought maxi skirts and flip flops. Of course, I am kidding. I have never met her. I don't know what she's like. She does have a reputation of being snarky, which is particularly delightful because it contradicts the keeping sweet mentality that women like her are supposed to adhere to. She has three children, one with the god awful name of Spurgeon. But I gotta admit, she has the cutest children I have ever seen. She usually keeps to mommy blogging on social media. Um, when she first got Instagram, it was all fire and brimstone and abortion holocausts, but she keeps it neutral these days. She hasn't done anything outrageous other than the normal Duggar awkwardness. I just, I poured my life into Jessa. Her husband is a dork and he got roasted for trying to rap alongside Flame. So we just sit down and just vibe. <laughs> just, you know, spitting the bars or whatever. Anybody here believe it? Flame, by the way, is the guy who sued Katy Perry for ripping off his song, Joyful Noise. It is also a popular opinion that Ben seems high all the time. All I have to say to that is, who isn't high all the time? Ginger Volo. For the longest time, Ginger was thought to be the rebel of the family, and there is even a website dedicated to freeing her. Now we all know that she is just as submissive and fundy as the rest of the family. Yes, she wears pants, but so do a lot of modern fundy women. People were really betting on her to fly the coop because she made silly faces and expressed interest in living in a big city. She might do good with like a visionary spunky person. Somebody that can provide her coffee. No. (laughs) Maybe off subject, but I don't think it's that off subject. When they're talking about like a visionary spunky person, I wonder if they're referring to like the different types of husbands um, that Debbie Pearl talks about. Um, Because she talks about a lot of like the leader, the artist, the whatever. Just a thought. She doesn't want to live three hours out from civilization. Okay. City, please. <laughs> city, she please. Would do fine <laughs> but I, city, I'd be, New York city I'd be okay <laughs> anywhere. But city would be awesome. In but there. if you didn't get somebody like that, the Lord could be working and teaching you something in that area. Yes, that's for sure. I need to work on. <laughs> so a lot of either this. way, no content. <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong, I think Ginger's as cool as the next guy, but reading about the Duggars for 10 plus years, I'm pretty jaded. Her husband Jeremy is a spicy white Italian man, and he is an ex-soccer player with a criminal past. He's also a preacher with some pretty problematic views such as Catholicism is a pagan religion. Just as Paul and Silas encountered the demonic in Philippi, so we encounter that here in Laredo. In this city, we have the pagan religion of Catholicism gripping the souls of the majority. Allowing children to express their gender identity means that they are ruling over their parents. There's, uh, I guess, a show. I don't know if it's on now or if it's coming out or something. There's a reality show from about a family in California or something, and they got all these kids and whatever. It's a show. But one of the, the little boy was five years old and decided that he didn't want to be a boy anymore, but now he wants to be a girl. So now Devin is Davina and the kid has told his parents and determined, well, I'm not really a boy. I'm a girl. And so the parents say, okay, well, if you're a girl, you're a girl. And so they go along with it. Well, that's a, a sign of the, the child is ruling. The child is, the parents have no discipline over the child or no instruction of what's right and wrong. It's just whatever you feel you do. And now you've got a a child who's barely come to cognitive understanding of the world the last couple years determining that how they were created is wrong and they're going to redo that. that Do we see that all over the place? And hitting your kids is a biblical right. The the discipline that God mandates in his word, which literally causes absolutely no physical harm at all. If done according to, now I'm not saying there's not people who abuse it, right? And then run the scripture to, no, that's abuse. When you're whipping your kid and he's got slashes on his legs and his, but 
biblically mandated discipline has absolutely no physical consequence to the child and it's to drive the foolishness from them and it's called abuse in our day and give you guys a few of my thoughts from the weekend it's been an interesting weekend uh, for me and ginger um, it's had a lot of kanye west going on the album dropped uh, jesus is king on friday which i listened to and then on saturday we went to um, the imax film basically, which is a performance of uh, Kanye West's Sunday service, which was done at um, uh, James Terrell's uh, The Crater in Arizona. Fantastic uh, film, just artistically. Some of the messages I'm getting, some of the things I'm reading on the internet, some of you need to be careful that you're not responding like a Pharisee, looking at a sinner like Kanye West and saying, Jesus could never save him. Or how dare you claim that Jesus would save him? He's still the same old filthy sinner. Kanye West has been an influence for much wickedness for many years, but he's claiming the Lord has regenerated him. Be careful that upon that profession, you do not immediately jump to the conclusion the Pharisees jumped to. Oddly, the connection between Jeremy and Kanye isn't that crazy of a jump. Kanye has been working closely with Pastor Adam Tyson, who graduated from the Master Seminary, which is the school that Jeremy is currently attending. The Volos help out with Jeremy's mom's organization, SWAN, which stands for Scaling Walls a Note at a Time. This is a Christian organization that provides instruments and mentoring for kids whose parents are in jail. Not all nice charity and instruments, though. They also previously ran the Crisis Pregnancy Center, at Jeremy's old church in Laredo, which if you know anything about Crisis Pregnancy Center, they are very unethical. Joseph Duggar. Not much is known about Joseph Duggar other than he's nice. He's the only known Duggar to go to college, even though it was Crown College. See my video about sketchy Christian colleges for more info on that. That's only funny because I've redone that episode like five times and I recently uh, re-put it out this month, so bubbly little girl. That young woman named Kendra. Josiah Duggar. Josiah has always been theatrical and over the top and he even previously courted a young woman named Marjorie. Hey guys, my name's Marjorie Jackson and I have some Duggar insider news for you. Now I bet you're all wondering, what is it? You guessed it, it's a courtship. Who is courting? It's one of the boys and it's not John David. It's not Joseph. Not Jedediah. Not jo Did I skip someone in the- Josiah! Josiah! That's right, that's right. Marjorie and I just recently started a courtship relationship. Well, what do you know? It's the thing, and I think each person has a different structure. Obviously, I had all my good looks and, and all that on my side. When the first wave of Duggar scandals hit, she hit the road. They broke up. One of the major legends that surrounds Josiah is that he was allegedly taken off camera during an episode of 19 Kids and Counting, and I guess beaten off screen by Jim Bob. That's the rumor. So I bought the episode off of Amazon and found the exact scene that people were talking about, and copyright claims be damned, I'm gonna show you the clip. Mama would say, Mama's gonna have another baby. Mama's gonna have another baby. I want to talk to you guys real quick. Hey guys, Josie's getting closer to two, and mom and I didn't even know if mom could have another baby or not. She's 45 years old. Personally, I don't think anything unsavory happened. Jim Bob is a bumbling idiot, but I don't think he would openly strike his child in front of a camera crew. I come to the Hey, night school made me cry too. Online commenters have painted this picture of Lauren as a copycat to Josie Bates. And on further inspection, you know what? They might be right. Joy Forsyth. Oh, what can I say about Joy Joy? She had a reputation as a tomboy growing up and then transformed into a redneck domestic goddess. Joy's husband is Austin Forsyth. His parents run Fort Rock Family Camp, which is a Christian family outdoor recreational retreat. They were also featured on CMT's World's Strictest Parents, which by the way, that episode has a Jewish girl on there that is forced to go to church with them. This episode of the World's Strictest Parents. All right. Look at John. Meet the Forsyths, a family who believes that the Lord is their master. Jesus is first, dad's next. And that a woman's place is in the home. Pepper's ready! 
Terry is the head. I am the help me. For the next week, they'll take in two stubborn teens. Came up with this idea of starting Fort Rock Family Camp with the, an idea of family restoration. Modesty is very important to us. We want people to look at our countenance rather than our bodies. We do not have to try cocaine to know that it's bad. All in all, I think these two are a good match as any fundamentalist arranged marriage can possibly be. They both love the outdoors, Jesus, and flipping houses. Good morning, you guys. Welcome to my camper. Although Austin did get in trouble recently when a couple bought a house from him and then sued him for fraud when they discovered that he did not get the proper permits to install a septic system. The couple claims that the septic system was not properly installed and cost them over $20,000 to repair. Austin and Joy have one son and a baby on the way. In 2019, Joy suffered a really terrible miscarriage. Her friends and family were very supportive and showered her with love during that time. She now has a YouTube channel where she details her day-to-day -day life and her and Austin have these weird libertarian friends that make annoying content. Finger guns. Mm -hmm. Boom. Yeah, those are cool. I... Jedediah Duggar. Whoever thought a Duggar would run for office again? Jed Duggar is currently running for Arkansas State Representative on the 2020 standard GOP platform of pro-life, pro-gun, pro-religious freedom over human decency. Hello, District 89. This is Jed Duggar, running to be your next state representative. I've grown up in the Springdale area all my life and am a local small business owner. I understand the important issues facing the residents and businesses of Springdale. As your next state representative, I will fight for sound economic policies, push for more tax relief for all our Kansans, and advocate for conservative values. I'm a Christian and I will stand up for religious liberties. I'm pro-life and I will be an advocate for the unborn. And I will always defend our Second Amendment. With your prayer, support, and help, I look forward to serving you as a strong conservative voice in Little Rock. His opponent is Democrat Megan Godfrey, and if you'd like to support her campaign, go to meganforarkansas.com. There has been recent speculation online that Jed does not actually live with the Duggars anymore. Uh, when all the drama with the FBI raid was happening, someone asked him about it on Instagram, and he said, I don't live there, and I am not aware of any investigation. Now for the rest of them. Jeremiah, Jason, James, Justin, Jackson, Johanna, Jennifer, Jordan, and our youngest daughter, Josie. In 2011, Michelle miscarried a baby who they named Jubilee. Since then, she seems to be content with her season of life and seems to be enjoying being a grandmother. The Duggars may present themselves as America's most wholesome quiver, but behind the facade lies many dark secrets. Patriarchy, sexual abuse, educational neglect, the list goes on. Sure, it's fun to cringe watch their show, but keep in mind that when you're watching, these people are real and the policies that they advocate for can and will affect our lives. Hopefully they will all lay low for the rest of the year and I won't have to make another video chronicling their scandals. All right, so that was uh, the original Duggars video director's cut. Um, hope you enjoyed it. Hope you're having a good time. I hope uh, you've learned something. You're laughing. You're, I don't know. The sun has set. My grow lights are on. I'm sleepy. I need to take the dogs out. Uh, next week is going to be, uh, the third episode of the Smelly Cats podcast, uh, because James and I are busy, so can't put out an episode, but, um, there's going to be lots of update videos in September. Two really infamous blondes that I've covered before will be talked about in September and then October, you know, spooky season, you know, you know, I got to do Joe Rodriguez for um november i don't know and december i don't know so that's about as far into my life as i have planned um, i love you guys very much subscribe to me on whatever you want um join the patreon it's only three dollars and you get access to the discord and we've been doing uh, monthly live streams i also put all kinds of weird ass videos on there like um i'm probably gonna put the full version of me singing pony on there um so it's a good time merch we have merch um, I just forgot who I was there for a second. I love you guys. Be good. And uh, talk to you later.